What is up guys? Today we are going to be bringing you six tips on how to play the lane as position four and things you need to do to get to immortal. Uh, you might ask, why is it always six? It's because you guys can't handle seven. So let's take a look at how this lane uh, proceeds. I'm going to show you the lane. I'm top with LC. We have a faceless void and a grim on their side. Tip number one I want to talk about is starting items. Uh, your starting items really should say like what you plan to do in the lane and how you think it's going to go. So there's two different uh, types of builds that you should be thinking like based on how you think the lane is going to go. You either think you're going to be fighting them a lot and that will be good, or you think that you're going to be dodging them because if you fight them you're going to lose. So if you're looking to fight them, you want to start stats, damage, probably a stick, and more regen. So here I started two sets of regen, I got the stick, I have stats, I have some damage from the fairy fire, which also like helps in these little close engagements, and that is saying that I'm okay with fighting them. So if you are looking to dodge them, like say instead of uh, Faces Voidgrim, they had a PA Grim or something, like very dangerous and scary for like a position 4 Rubik, and I'm looking to dodge, maybe I go one set of tangos, boots first, um, get a sentry ASAP, play to block poles, uh, play to block their small camp, pull, and generally like stay away so that I can't ever get gone on by the PA, right? So it depends on the lane and how you think it's gonna go as to what your starting item should be, but think about am I fighting or am I dodging and itemize accordingly. Tip number two that I want to talk about is playing for poles, and this is like, it's like kind of 101, but, um, it's, you just, I'm 6k, 7k, and I still screw it up. Uh, I just got a coaching replay analysis from BSJ. Um, you should be able to, it's on his Discord if you're in his Discord. If you, I'm a Marana, I was 7,100 7, at the time, MMR, and I just, like, screwed up the polls. I just didn't play for polls at all, and it's something that even a 7k player just, like, you know, as you're playing game after game, and you're like fighting, and you're like, okay, how do I need to like fight this lane or whatever? Pulls are something I think that it's easy to forget about, at least for me. I, I forget about pulls sometimes. So I was being very cognizant in this game, in my more recent games, after getting that BSJ replay analysis done, of playing for pulls. So you can see, I blocked the small camp, I see that my big camp is um, blocked, so I immediately go to unblock it. If you're good on the position 5, you'll probably be over here trying to stop me from doing what I'm doing. Like, he could have been killing my sentry because I didn't find his right away if he had just been checking, but he didn't. So that's how you would play against this, is position 5. Yes, my Legion is alone for a while. That's the downside. But he's in, like, a not terrible, terrible lane for him. And he does a good job of, like, dodging their aggression. Okay, so tip number 3. This is simple. Secure the range creeps with your nukes. If you're position 4. If you're... Position 3 doesn't have a way to do it themselves. So here, my Legion obviously has a way to secure the range creep himself. I did not need to use my nuke there, but in a lot of cases, you will need to use your nuke there. It is good to use your nuke there. Don't let your cores tell you that you're griefing them by taking the CS. They are going to get out of position and take a bunch of damage. Just tell them, hey, I'll secure the CS. Focus on the melees, right? You don't have to worry about getting out of position. Uh, if they flame you, just mute them but make it a point to secure range creeps that your offlaner cannot otherwise easily get with your nukes if you have one. Here we've gotten a kill on their void, but I just want to point out my persistence in playing for the pulls. I again body block for three minutes in a row this small camp. Don't make it a one-time thing and then forget, right? I mean, I know you're going to forget sometimes or something will be happening at the exact moment that you were looking to pull, but do your best be as consistent as possible. Don't let them get this pole camp off, guys. It's so important. Um, it, it, it just matters so much more than you would think it would. Uh, it, it really does. Tip number four is uh, maybe you think it's a basic, but we need to talk about it. Some of you need to hear this. You need to pull when the lane is pushing towards them. So here I have five creeps. They're about to have three. This fourth one that they have is just about to die. Lane is hard pushing into them, right? The only thing that matters here is that we pull and get the lane pulled back. So that is what I'm going to do. Tr when you're trying to do this, um, a lot of times the position 5 will try and stop you. So what should you do if they try and do this? Well, first you should trade with them a little bit. 
Um, try and get them to back off so you can pull anyways. Sometimes that will be enough. Second is the point, half of the point of pulling is to get the lane back. The other half is to make them go out of position to stop you from getting the lane back. So here, this this Grim stopped me from pulling, yes. But as a result, he pays the price and feeds a kill. This is just as good as getting the pull off. And what's nice is he's now dead and now I can look to pull anyways. Somehow they had like blocked their own small camp, which is pretty funny that I've been body blocking it. Uh, but see how I'm consistent with my pull. Grim's dead. Sweet. Now I can pull, right? All they did was feed a kill. I still got the pull off one creep wave later, 30 seconds later, and we're still going to get the net benefit of this pull. And it was important that you take the opportunity to be aggressive on the position five if they go out of position to stop your pull. A lot of times these position fives are not going to be strong enough to stop your pull, guys. So don't just like be like, oh, I must pull. And then if they try and stop you, like, Throw your hands up in the air, right? If they try and stop you, they might be out of position. So think like, I'm gonna pull here. If they try and stop me, then I'll try and kill them, right? Uh, that's what you should be thinking. So tip number five is going to be know what kills you in your lane. Sometimes a lot of things kill you. Uh, you know, they just use any combination of spells and you just die. Sometimes they have to use a very specific combination of spells to kill you. So here, what I want to... What, you should, what I should be thinking about is I die specifically in this lane to getting ink swelled. If I don't get ink swelled, they can't kill me for the most part. I mean, maybe if I get slowed by Stroke of Fate and Void gets a bunch of bashes and like nothing else is happening, maybe I die. But like, I already have my boots, right? For the most part, I'm only dying if I get ink, ink swelled. So here I'm aggressively running at them. My positioning is very aggressive. And this is a mistake because I... They have not used Inkswell or Void Leap, so I'm in, I initiated this trade. I was trying to be aggressive on them, and then all of a sudden I get bashed once, Inkswelled, instantly dead. I needed to be playing defensively here because they had Kill Threat on me. What's the main thing you don't want to do when you're winning your lane, right? My Legion has two extra denies and five extra CS on this guy. Um, this lane becomes harder for Void over time, not easier. So like we're in a really good spot for this Legion to pull ahead. What's the one thing I should not be doing is looking to take bad trades. Do I want to trade against these two guys, like, out of the lane? Not really. It makes Legion spells weaker, and I'm just a huge threat. They have all their spells. There's no reason to force this here. I wasn't thinking about how I died in engagements. I was just thinking, oh, I'm strong. Like, we're doing well. You have to think, like, just because you're strong doesn't mean they can't kill you if the conditions are right. So think about what specifically kills you in your lane. And this also turns into mini power spikes if they use spells or not. Because say they do use like Inkswell, they're trying to get the Legion, and then it's down, right? In those periods, while Inkswell's not up, I can be extra aggressive. And then if I know Inkswell's off cooldown, then I can be less aggressive. So knowing what spells kill you tells you when you can be more aggressive and when you can't. All right, so tip number six, I actually mentioned in my last video as the position five disruptor tips you need to get to Immortal but I'm gonna talk about it again. I'll go into a little more detail on it this time. So this tip number six is know when to sit in open lanes or lanes where nobody else on your team is in the lane. So here, I TP'd in to re um, respond to this gank that happened. And meanwhile, my Legion died top, unfortunately. You know, he probably should have backed off a little bit. The result here is I end up being mid because my Invoker TP'd bottom and I sit mid for three waves, and I was level four and three quarters when I got here with 10 CS and a net worth of 1866. And all I do as this techies just shoves the lane in is I get three free creep waves of XP and for the most part gold, I don't get every CS, under towers. Uh, here I didn't even need to drag it back, it was just kind of a mistake, don't do that. Just keep it outside the towers and get the free CS. Uh, but notice my invoker has had space to make plays bottom, now he's farming the jungle, good mids will let their support sit mid for a while and take XP and gold. So what have I done? I've prevented damage from being done to my tower for three, three waves in a row. Techies can push hard with his uh, remote mines damaging the tower if nobody's there, right? So I've stopped any damage from being done to our mid tower. I've gotten a f over a full level, I'm almost six now, over a full level of XP. This is over a minute and a half, not that long. 
and I've gotten 400 net worth worth of gold, and it's cr it created the space for my mid invoker to do whatever he wanted. He still got some farm in the jungle. He was helping bottom, and my legion was doing okay top. Um, sometimes it's hard to leave your offlaner alone, but the net result of all that, even if Legion wasn't free farming, which I think he was, he was having a good lane, but if you're preventing your mid tower from taking damage, it's still worth it for you to just sit mid and sap that XP. As a support, you should be like, yes, this is the dream. And so um, I feel like I had huge impact just sitting there mid, right? Um, could I have been looking to TP bottom? Maybe, but they seem to have it under control. Um, having your eyes open a TP to a side lane if they need you is decent, but remember my invoker was jungling for part of it, not a ton of stuff was happening, uh, but it was a huge boon to me and my game, and just kind of like boosts you a little bit into like having a more impactful like immediate post laning stage, like being stronger, having that extra raindrop or wand, or like being able to buy those wards and smokes uh, really sets you ahead, so that was tip number six. Same as the one last week, but you can do it as position 4 too. Some people might say it's better to do it as position 4 as position 5. Yeah, it's whatever. Do it on both if the opportunity is correct. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching. Like the video if you haven't already. Please subscribe to my channel if you like the content. And if you want to be coached by me, check the link in the description to my Discord. There's all the information there on how to sign up.